Hi, this is Kara Mayer Robinson. Welcome to Really Famous, where I talk to famous people, but I cut through the fluff and superficial stuff to get to who they really are and how they really feel. My guest today is actress, writer, and producer Jill Whelan. You may remember her from The Love Boat. She played Vicki Steubing, Captain Steubing's daughter. Jill was recently in New York to do some work for Princess Cruises. She's an ambassador for the company now. She was staying at her boyfriend's apartment. At the time, he was her boyfriend, but he surprised her with a marriage proposal, so he's now her fiancé. His name is Jeff Napple, and you'll hear him a little bit in the background. He chimes in just a little bit at the end. Here's Jill Whelan. Jill, thanks so much for being a guest. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's I'm my really pleasure. happy to see you. We it's met good to see you too. very briefly um, a couple of years ago. Yep. On the big love boat uh, sailing on the 50th anniversary of Princess Cruises. And that was so much fun. Yeah, it was great. And the christening of the ship, which was so much fun. Totally. So good to see you in New York. You don't live here, though. I do not. So you live I in L.A. Not. normally. I do. So tell me about that. Um, How's life? Everything is great. Um, I live in L.A. working, um, you know, working mom, all that fun stuff. Um, Did you grow up there? I grew, I, for all intents and purposes, yes. I, I grew up in, I was born in Oakland, California, which is in Northern California. But um, I started working in Los Angeles when I was nine and moved down there permanently when I was 11, so. So what what brought you to LA then? Was there um, something specific? Was it the love book? Well, I was in LA working on other shows and stuff, but my permanent move was because of the love boat. Okay. So what were the other shows? Do so you... um, it was, well, the show I, the, I had a series before Love Boat called Friends, not the friends that you know, because if that were the friends that I was on, I would drive a much nicer car. <laughs> but <laughs> no, this Friends was uh, a show about three young kids, and it was another Aaron Spelling show. So that one, and then... Um, did that go very long, or was it like a pilot? No, it was a pilot, and we did, we shot 13 episodes, and that was back in the day when they would put a show in a certain time slot and if it didn't go it didn't go they didn't switch time like now they'll switch things around to see if maybe it just needs a different lead-in or a different night or what have you and back then they didn't do that and we were up against 60 minutes which still oh, to this day it. is yeah yes yeah, still so, to this day I mean yeah. it's still a thing a yeah. huge thing yeah I don't know anybody who's competing with it necessarily now because it's seven o'clock right? right right and that's the time that our show was on which I think was also kind of a funny time slot but yeah. it was a show for you know geared towards families and kids and so stuff is, like was that. your family already in the entertainment industry no nobody in my family's ever been I mean, so I'm, what happened um well when I was a little kid my mom was a nursery school uh, director a preschool director and so in the summertime she was working but she wanted to find something creative for me to do um, and so there was a local production of The King and I, and she thought, oh, King and I, that's, that's got kids in it. That'll be like camp, and it'll be creative. So she found the local voice teacher, and the voice teacher gave me an audition song, and I auditioned, and I got a speaking role, and it just kind of, then I realized how much I loved it, and it just kind of took off from there. Awesome. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. So Aaron Spelling's there. He gets to know you. Is that how the love boat came about, or was what happened some other? was I was in Los Angeles auditioning for the national touring company of the musical Annie. So I was auditioning and with Marty Sharnan and all the people from that, that produced and directed and created Annie, and there was a talent scout there from Aaron Spelling, and they saw me and they asked me if I would come and audition for a pilot that they were doing called Friends. So I auditioned for that, I auditioned for Annie, I got both, and I had to decide what I wanted to do, and I'd always wanted to be on television, so. That was that. That was it, and thank God I made that choice. Yeah, so then that very quickly went one thing turned into the other. Right, and the, the pilot didn't go, and I went back to Northern California, back to school and everything else, and I got a call from Spelling saying, we'd like, we want you to come back and play on the love boat for for permanent. So was it already on without you before yes. that, right? So, so was you on knew a, what it was then at that right, point. Right, I had guest starred on it. Oh. So in the beginning of the second season, I think I guest starred on it. And by the end of the second season, um, I came back as a regular. Fun. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, were you awesome. intimidated at all? At that? No, you know, I think the great thing about being a kid 
is you you don't understand the scope of what you're doing. Um, and it's funny because as an adult, and I got to work with everybody from Gene Kelly to Ethel Merman to I danced with Ginger Rogers. I mean, the, the, the list is enormous. Um, Andy Warhol, all these crazy people, but none of it ever faced me like that. When I was an adult and I had sort of the presence to understand where people lie and the popularity meter and what they've contributed to my life and all of that stuff after, you know, having the breadth of however many years as an adult, things completely changed. So when I worked with um, Dick, um, Dick Van Dyke, I did an episode of Diagnosis Murder, I think, or something like that. And when I worked with him, now I was a mom with a young child. And I was so intimidated and starstruck that I could barely get my lines out because all the memories of watching uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or Mary Poppins with my son. Yeah, it's Bert. You know, it's Bert. Come on. And it was, I mean, I know he must have thought I was just a complete idiot, but I was, I mean, just. I'm sure there were many other people who were just. So it's probably, him. yeah. He's yeah, got yeah, to be yeah. used to that. He must be. He must be. Day. I don't know if I ever articulated that to him, but probably should have, because I'm sure he's like, who is this idiot they hired? <laughs> so Jeez. he's like the first person that you were starstruck over. Um, yeah. Well, actually, before I started really working, I know I, um, I we worked, the, the first place we did the Love Boat was at 20th Century Fox, and on the lot at that time shooting were MASH, Family, the TV show Family. Um, heart to Heart. Um, uh, let me think who else was on there. Uh, Charlie's Angels. And I can't remember who else, but those are the... And, and, and um, uh, when we first, first, first got there, Starsky and Hutch. So I was in the commissary having lunch, and Paul Michael Glazer, who played Starsky, I think, was having lunch in the commissary, and I had my fan moment and went over to ask him for his autograph after a lot of hemming and hawing with my mother. And he said, I said, I, can I have your autograph? My name is Jill Whelan and I'm working here and, and you're my biggest fan, which I meant to say, I'm your biggest fan, but I said, you're my biggest fan. And I'm sure for him to have this 11 year old kid come up and say that was probably charming and all of that and he was maybe, so sweet maybe he was your biggest fan yeah, maybe he was how do you know that wasn't true <laughs> because i was a brand new actor so <laughs> but it was really cute and he was so sweet and then i think i stole his napkin and i had it thumb printed thumb tacked to my wall for god only knows how long love that i know love that so did you watch those shows then like were you watching oh, yeah. angels uh, i i think so yeah uh-huh, uh-huh. i must crazy. have been yeah so how did being on the love boat impact you personally professionally both like what looking back now i mean i know you talk about it a lot you've had a lot of time to reflect but yes um well the, you know it, it's hard for me to say how it impacted me only because it's the only reality that i know so a lot of people say you know was it weird growing up do you feel like you missed out on your childhood and i my answer is always i don't know because it's the only reference I, I have and for me what I what I do believe about it is that it was just an incredible opportunity to be able to have been given to work with these aren't just Hollywood names but they're legends and to have the experiences to travel the world the way we did that was that's the one thing that I'm so grateful for with my kids is that I have been able to through Princess because of being the Celebrations Ambassador for Princess Cruises, is I've been able to give them the gift of global awareness because now they see other cultures and they can understand what it is to live outside of the United States. We're such a sort of a microcosm and, and it's a different reality than the rest of the world. and So different. And so many kids don't have the chance to really be able to right. see that perspective. But it's so nice that they get to. It's so important in terms of tolerance and understanding and um, identifying and realizing that we are more than just our little Ourselves. United States. We are a part of a global community. And with internet and everything else, it's gotten smaller and smaller. But I don't think the tolerance 
is at the level where it should be of understanding other people's cultures and things that are different. I agree. So Surprisingly, right, because we have become so much more global, especially right. with the internet, with social media and whatnot. Right. But the problem for me is that when you see stuff on a screen, you don't get the relationship like mm -hmm. you do if you're in person, you mm -hmm. know? And so our kids, this generation is so so used to, so conditioned to looking here, you know, at, a, at an iPhone or at an iPad or whatever, that this eye-to-eye -eye contact is almost like a lost art. And, and, and to be able to make sure that your kids are forced to do that is so important, so globally or even, you know, across the dinner table. Sure. I'm constantly saying to my kids all the time, in the eyes, in yeah. the eyes. Yeah, and they may not be on their phone or whatever at that moment, but even so, if they're not used to it. Right. Yeah. Right. Tell me about life as a as the ambassador. So the title is Celebrations Ambassador yes. for Princess. Yes. So that sounds like a really nice gig. Oh my God, it's the greatest gig in the world. So it's what do you awesome. what is it like? Paint me a picture. Well, you know, it's it's really kind of just an extension of growing up on the ship. So when you know we talk about how Love Boat impacted me, one of them was my love for travel, and and back then you did get to actually go. Oh, places. we went. So oh, you were yeah. filming. Like where? We filmed all over the world. We, we were in Russia, China. Uh, we were in China before it was open. We were the first film crew in there to, to be there. So while I was going to school and studying about Asia I, and the Great Wall, I was actually sitting on it. That's crazy. So yeah. you're like what age at this point? Like 13 or uh, something? 14? Yeah, like, yeah, up until 19, I think. So, so I developed this incredible love of travel and cultures and things and cooking and all myriad of, of things. And and so to, to be able to work with Princess now, it's incredibly organic for me because I'm just basically talking about the stuff that I already love. It's not yeah. like I have to have a script or a, you know, make sure you make these points because basically they have been really great with me and just saying, Talk about what you love. So what do you do? Like I'm, where, the, I'm the demo. You are the demo. <laughs> so wh like, what do you do exactly? You go to christening. What else? Sometimes we we uh, I'm the godmother of three ships. Five, I can't remember. It's three or four. Three ships. But how many godmothers does each ship have? Well, uh, well it, it usually there's one, but there are a couple special circumstances. For example, the Love Boat cast has christened two ships. So they've christened the, the Dawn and mm -hmm. the Regal. Cool. Which is the trip that yes, you were I was on. on the Regal. Right. And I've also uh, I christened the Caribbean Princess too. Nice. So what I do as Celebrations Ambassador is uh, basically talk to people and get them to think about what it is that they have in their lives to celebrate. Birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, things like that. But milestones, whether it be uh, a girlfriend's getaway, whether it be um, you know, father-son time, uh, multi-generational experiences. And that for me, on one cruise in this summer, I took my kids to the Mediterranean with my sister and my best friends and their kids. So on that cruise, we were celebrating their first time on a cruise ship, their first time outside of the United States. We were celebrating my sister and I, my sister lives in New York, so my sister and I getting together, we were celebrating my girlfriend who lives in Pennsylvania, and I seeing each other and having you know really good girlfriend bonding time. Um, my son was celebrating his uh, 21st birthday. So, so and my, all those things at once, it's a great the, thing to do. Plus it's, a, it's like a lot of together time, not too much. You, you can go your well, own the, separate ways, right? This is the great thing <laughs> that cruises, I gotta say about right. cruises is that I, the most obvious elephant in the room is I have a 21 year old and I have an 11 year old. Oh, is that obvious? They. Well, I guess for, for, for me it is. I think what's obvious, meaning what's obvious about it is they don't like the same. Right. I mean, some things they like that are the same, but they're not. So to take two kids like that on a trip as a single mother and figure out a way to make sure both of them are happy. Yeah, it's almost only. Is almost only on cruising. a cruise ship. I hear you. And I'm telling you, I get on the ship, I say hello, and... 
it's about three days before I really see them. Right. And <laughs> you can also have other generations too, like grandparents and whatnot. Right. Right. Which it's is, like the perfect way. Everybody has something. Awesome. And they can be independent too. Yeah. Like even if the kids are little, you can put they them can in the kids club or whatever. And it's little. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, little or mean. I mean, they have three different kids clubs. So they have, you know, the, like the toddlerish age, mm -hmm. and then they have the nine to 13 age, and then they've got the 14 to 17. We have this great partnership with Discovery. So they do Shark Week, they do Mythbusters, they do all this fun stuff. But for, for me and my kids, um, the Discovery sanctioned excursions are unbelievable. We got to go to a turtle sanctuary and release baby leatherback turtles into the ocean. Oh my God, my son That's is amazing. My son, yeah, my so son is such an animal them? person. How did that? Like, how did that work? Well, they, you know, they they breed them, and then they bring out these buckets of hundreds of these baby turtles, and you, they just let you pick them up and put them in the sand as they. Boop, Oops, and then you, you know, watch them go. go. And you watch them go, and it's like... Now, I don't want to make this take a turn for the worse, but isn't it true that like a lot of them don't really make it? Well, well, that's it, and that's why they have these sanctuaries, but that's the stuff that the kids learn. So for me, an experience like this, where I can take my kid on a trip of a lifetime, but he's also really learning, is so paramount to anything else. I mean, yeah, they can do water slides and all that fun stuff, too, but if they can learn about something that they create a passion that they yeah. didn't know they had or if they had a passion existing and they get to really water that that desire this way it's 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 just invaluable so that's why um for me taking kids on a cruise and then you only have to unpack once which with and you don't have to keep finding kids. a restaurant to eat at I know. that pleases everybody. Exactly. So, all right, so you're going on on sailings. So we do sailings. I've done christenings. Um, I perform on a couple of the ships sometimes as well because I have a cabaret show that I do. I'm putting together a new one. So the, the last one was really fun. And the new one I'm going to do is probably going to be all about, um, I'm going to sing songs that are reminiscent or were sung by some of the incredible talents that we've had on the show. So that's pretty cool for somebody to like book a sailing and they get on the ship and then it's like suddenly, oh look, Joe yeah. Allen's gonna be singing. It's really fun, it's so much fun. And the musicians, I was a little reticent in the beginning because I thought, oh my God, I don't know the musicians, this is gonna be weird. They're flipping awesome. Oh yeah? Yeah, they are. So they exceeded your expectations. Oh. Cool. So how often are you going? Are you on a cruise? Um, I would say like five times a year. Oh, that's seems pretty good. Be, yeah. Nice life you've got here. I know. I think I'm doing um, Alaska in September. <laughs> so let's back up a little bit to what happened after the love boat. So it wraps up. It's time. You're probably. I don't know. I'm putting words in your mouth. Are you done at this point? Do you well, feel yeah. like okay? It's time I to laugh do at else. that now because I'm thinking, God, that was such a good paycheck, and I was so happy to be done with the show. And now I'm like, oh man. But yeah. Hindsight is 2020. 2020. I know. I know. Crystal clear. But I was a 20. You know, I was a 19. 20 year old kid who had been working since steadily since I was nine. So it was it was time for me and I, w I left that immediately and I went and I did a, a movie of the week that Martin Sheen directed, uh, which was awesome and fun. And then I Were just- Were you starstruck by Martin as well? Um, no, but okay. I, because he was at the, uh, through the audition process, so by the time we got to the set, I already knew him, you know, and what I was is incredibly grateful to be able to working with such an amazing, talented man. So, okay, so you were saying, I'm going to go back to something yeah. you said if you don't mind. So, you were done, you had been, you were like, what, 21, I think you said? I think it was 19, 20, something, 20, like, something that. like that. Okay. Um, so, who were you hanging out with, like, all these, did, were you able to forge, like, friendships with people oh, aside yeah. from work, or did oh, you yes. have such a weird schedule that... No, I had normal friends. I went to a school, so on the days when I wasn't working, I was at school, and I did the high school musicals and all of that stuff. Because you were, like, a traditional, regular, yeah. like, high school. Yeah. Ah, but not when you were, like, 19, probably. Well, no, I had graduated by then, and, and so when I finished uh, working with Martin Sheen, I thought I I need to get out of this town because the hard part about being in LA or, or New York I suppose when you've come off of a hit show is okay now what mm -hmm. and I thought I didn't I, I, I didn't want to feel like a has-been at 19 
when most people are just beginning their lives. So I thought, I need to get out of this town, and so I'm going to go to college in England. So I took a semester. Back up. So you didn't want to be a has been. What do you? How would you be a has been? Wouldn't you be? Well, because my show's over. So as opposed to being, I used to be on the. Right, but you weren't trying to be like you weren't trying to parlay that into something else. Like, oh, now's my chance to cash in at least. You on... know, here's the problem with being 19 and working steadily since the time you were nine years old. You just think it's going to fall into your lap. I mean, you you don't know. Right, because it you did. Know? It's always been there. Then. Yeah. It, it's always been there. Oh, you want to do a movie? Sure. Then the producer is walking and he sees you on the set, uh, on the um, lot of 20th and says, hey, you want to come over and do an episode of blah, blah, blah? I mean, and it was like... So, right. It, was, it seemed like that was just normal. Like, right. So when I was 19 and done, I was like, I need to just go and explore. So I went to college in England for a semester, came back to L.A., said, nope, still don't like it, moved to New York. Lived in went New York. To, went to England to study what? Um, I studied um, English literature and, um, <laughs> funny enough, jazz. Because okay, so English literature. Yeah. Where, where did that come from? Well, I, lo I, I, I love, I love reading and I love um, Shakespeare. So I thought, well, if I'm going to do it, yeah, that's the place to go. Sure. And so I, which school? Um, Guilford University. Okay. And then I came back to LA and went, nope, still don't like it, moved to New York. What didn't you like about it when you moved back? It's just, it was, I felt the pressure of what's next. And um, I think at that age, you know, and especially, I don't know, the business has changed so much. People today, when they, once they're on a show like that, the, the, there's a machine that's that's motored behind them, you know, that kind of propels them. And they've got, you know, this endorsement happening, and then they've got, it, it's a different industry than it was back then. And my mom really just wanted me to have a good childhood. So it wasn't about, well, now let's find her next project. My mother was never a momager. Mm -hmm. She was a mother. I was going to ask you about that. She really was. She was like a mom she looking was, out for you. She was all, all about that. And, and rightfully so, because I could be sitting talking about my background with you in a completely different fashion at this totally. point. Totally. Very um, different experience. Like so experience many of my contemporaries. Right. Um, so it was I am, so common then, especially for a child common. actor. It's, it's, it's one of the hazards of this business is that when a parent is around, it's very difficult as a parent if you don't have, if, 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 you, if, you don't, if you're not successful yourself or you don't have your own life or you don't have your own sense of self, to get completely enamored by the business and the fame and the money and those are the things that become important and more important to many of the parents than raising a healthy child with mm -hmm. with good values and um, you know there's the Lindsay Lowens and all of those you know the the mother wants the fame just as much mm -hmm. if not more if not more right and or wants it for their kid or whatever it is or wants their kid to pay the family bills or what you know that's their meal ticket none of those are healthy choices yeah, I think like Macaulay Culkin was another one of those right, right. Danny Bonaducci will tell the story about how yeah Chris Jenner yeah yeah oh big time Chris Jenner what about Danny Bonaducci he he tells what this story well he tells this story about how when he was a kid his mother would yell at him and say Danny go to your room and he'd say which one? Oh. I own all of them because they were living in a house that he bought. That's not healthy. It's not healthy. That's crazy. But, but you know, yeah, yeah. And he knew, so he knew it. Right. And, and you know, he had his trials and tribulations. Sure. And, and he had a show, too, I remember at one point. It wasn't that long ago, yeah. like 10 years or something. Being Bonaducci or yeah, something yeah. like that what was happened? a reality show. And he was a re he was a radio guy. He was a radio guy too. Yeah, I think he still he's is. Good. So he's found his his niche and found his way. But you know, it's 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 tough that way. So back to my point was that my mom was not interested in you know orchestrating and navigating my career. That's not what her. And so when the show was over, I had an agent, but I didn't go out actively and say, i got to get my next gig, because I, I was in the mindset that I'm sure it'll come along when it comes along, like they always have. Why should today be any different? And it is. It's just, you know, it, it it's, as an adult now, I understand the business of it. So I understand how much more aggressive and creative 
you have to be and how you really do have to navigate and orchestrate and it's a much more calculated effort than what I was putting in at 19 because I understand it now and now I have paid my dues and that's what I was missing as a kid. So, um, you know. So you went back to LA, you felt that already. Right. Because there is a, a whole feel there, yeah. really, because almost everybody there. Because it's, that's the industry. That's the industry. Yeah. And like, that's where everybody, it's, there's a lot of. Right. There's a vibe. And so I said, okay, I'm going to leave. I'm moving to New York. And I did. I moved to New York. By yourself? Yep. I didn't know anybody. Got an apartment. I knew, I knew one person. Um, I got an apartment in New York, and um, this one friend of mine said, listen, if you're going to really want to empower yourself in this business, you need to know the other side of it. She worked at Madison Square Garden in production. So I started working for her as a runner, like getting somebody's vitamins, putting water in somebody's dressing room, like all these. And I remember one time we had, I think it was Natalie Cole, I think it was Natalie Cole who was, who was um, performing. And she was on Love Boat, and so we were contemporaries then. But now, all of a sudden, I'm stalking her fridge. That's so wild. Which right. was, but I didn't even care. I, it wasn't like I had some. Oh my God, what's happened to me? Because it wasn't about that. Yeah. I still had money. It wasn't that. It was that this was a new phase. opportunity yeah. for me and a new phase. And I really did learn a lot about the business. I, I created a role for myself at the Garden that's actually still there, which was production liaison between the garden and when they have film crews and television crews come in to do the SBs or the Essence Awards or whatever it is that okay. they will do there. They didn't have that then. But well, that's I, interesting. So you saw that that was necessary or well, it was just kind of created at that moment? It was kind of created at the moment because I was the only one who knew the union mm. rules with television because I grew up with it. Perfect. So it worked out that way. Uh, and so I was there for a couple of years and it was an invaluable experience Yeah, I was me. there recently right as you enter and on the floor there are all those tiles with all the people who have performed at the garden uh -huh. or like athletes who've right. been at the garden and it is so impressive. I yeah. mean, it's obviously an impressive place but like when you look at every single, almost every name like jumps out at you as yeah. the biggest name there is and right. there are like hundreds of them. Yeah, and it was incredible. It was so incredible. So Natalie Cole, you met, did you meet any or stock any fridges of other interesting people? Oh God. So, I mean, Hundreds. Um, uh, uh, Harry Connick, um, Cher, uh, Billy Joel. I was backstage when they did the MTV tribute to Bob Dylan, and Sinead O'Connor had just been on Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live and ripped up the picture of the Pope. And she went on stage in New York, a very Catholic community, Catholic and Jewish community. And she had just ripped up the picture of the Pope. She was booed off stage, and Neil Young was right off stage next to me, and I was standing next to Neil Young. And she came off, and she was so upset that she vomited in the trash can. And he looks at her, and he goes, it's a rough and tumble business, baby. Get used to it. <laughs> so, you know, those kind of experiences dealing it's with right. when the circus was in town and helping orchestrate getting the elephants up through um, Central Park. How did the elephants get up? Well, they had to walk them through Central Park in the very early hours of the morning and, and load them in to the garden. Poor um, elephants. That, that seems like not the worst of what the elephants went through, though. No, exactly. I'm one of the very happy mm -hmm, people that mm -hmm. they're not in the circus anymore. Um, trying to figure out where to store the Dalai Lama's yak butter sculptures. I mean, there are so many fun things about it be besides just the business of, of, of producing a, a concert and stuff like that, which we did all the time. I remember the Wyans were there and they were sitting in my dressing room because they wanted to go upstairs and see the Knicks play. So, not my dressing room, my office. Uh, so I took them upstairs to watch the Knicks and then they came back downstairs and they just sort of sat in my office and we started singing Amazing Grace together in my office. I mean, so there's some really fun. Yeah, you have had like an incredible life, yeah. professionally speaking, when you think about it. So you're on the love boat beginning, and then you're at Madison Square Garden with like all this close contact with these very interesting people. Yeah. Learning some very interesting aspects of a different side of the business. Yes. Yes. And now you're traveling across the world. With with princess and yeah, it's, yeah. it's but really it is. I mean, do you do you stop sometimes and say to yourself like this is pretty crazy? Like I'm pretty lucky. All these experiences, even when maybe Madison Square Garden wasn't your main objective, right? You kind of fell into that maybe. It you know well it's interesting because um, I'm always grateful. Um, in fact, my kids and I every morning, the first thing we do is wake up and I, we we do our gratefuls, which is where we say three things that we're grateful for. And they have to be different as much as we can 
every day. Um, and my son, yesterday, my youngest, Grant, he's visiting with his dad right now, and he was, they went and saw this YouTuber. You know, YouTubers are now like the thing. Mm -hmm. So I said, what was your favorite thing that you learned from this YouTuber when we were talking on the phone? He said, well, he said that you always have to um, keep an open mind. Like if you're going, and this is an 11 year old talking, if you're going for one thing, but that's not the thing you were planning on, you should go, you should take every opportunity. And that's exactly, I think, and like I'm having my own epiphany right now, which is that I think I've always been that way where I know what I want, but I'm not afraid to keep an open mind to see what else life has to offer because it could take you in a direction that maybe A, you weren't planning to go, but where there are no doubt invaluable lessons and I think that's probably what the garden was for me. I mean, and I did it again when I worked in um, Los Angeles. I worked at um, a news station and became an investigative news researcher and a producer. When so was that? After that was the garden? After, after the garden, came back, to, uh, met my uh, first future ex-husband. <laughs> okay. <So> your, <laughs> your first future ex-husband. Yeah. Okay. So there are two ex-husbands? Two ex-husbands. Okay. My grandmother always said marriages are like pancakes. You have to throw the first one out. So true. It does not come out. Well, I think of them as crepes, but yes. <laughs> You're right. You put it on. Well, crepes, and you got to throw out, you have to more. Throw it out. Exactly. Until you figure it out. At least two. Exactly. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, two is the perfect number two, to throw out. But third time <laughs> is a charm. So, yeah, which is so true. But um, so with my first ex-husband. First future ex-husband. Yeah, we got married. Um, we were married for a very short time, but after we were married, I got pregnant with my 21-year-old. And so you're, at this point, you're doing in the New York. news? You're still in New York? Yeah, not in the garden. News. Yeah, I had, yeah, I was still working in the garden, met my um, ex-husband, and then we got married, got pregnant, moved to Los Angeles. All three of you. Had my, no, no had him in Los Angeles. Okay. And then, um, ended up getting divorced very quickly because that was a bad situation. Um, what kind of bad? Well, I don't talk about it because my son, because of my older son, he doesn't have any relationship with his father. He hasn't seen him since he was one. But oh. my feeling is, you know, he's still at a cellular level part of this individual. And I don't, yeah, you know, I don't want to say anything that would, for my son. Sure. So it just was a not a good situation. I'll put it to you. That was a bad situation. But, um, I got this incredible kid out of it, but I realized I needed to take care of this kid. And the first husband um, went through all of my money, so I needed to in that short to, period of time. Yeah, so I needed to feed my kid. So I went into news, television news, and started at the assignment desk, answering phones, just like at the garden, starting it, you know putting things in the dressing room. Only this time I had a different purpose. This time it really was survival. Financial. And so... Um, Why news? Because I'd always been a news junkie. I always loved it. It was still kind of part of my business. But because... I don't know why I didn't just go get an agent and say, okay, time to get back to work. I think somehow in the back of my mind I, I, I didn't have enough self-confidence to be back in LA, you know, it was a, so I went into news and, but I mean, it was great. I started at the assignment desk answering phones, then I became an assignment editor, and then went from there over to investigative uh, producing and researching. And uh, then I met my future second ex-husband. <laughs> Moved. You met him on that job, or well, no, no, no. I had known him. I actually met him at Madison Square Garden. Is where we had met. Oh. But, but we. Uh oh. So it sounds like there's a pattern here, and it's New York guys. I know, right? So, um, <laughs> I know. Uh, so we get married. I moved with him to Pennsylvania, and I have my second son, my 11 year old. And we. Uh, what part of Pennsylvania? Uh, Yardley. Which is? Fox County. Okay. Just on the other side of um, Trenton and the Delaware River. Mm -hmm. and it's really nice. New Hope, all that area. Washington's yeah. crossing. Yeah. So, um, and I have this amazing little boy and then. And a 10 year old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, my very dear friend in Los Angeles who's had a radio show for 25 years called The Mark and Brian Show. It was a huge success. His partner is leaving. He says, I want you to come out and take his place. Now, my marriage at that point was really unhappy. And so I was... Did that, was that marriage going downhill fast as well? Or did that yeah. take a little longer? Well, we were married for 10 years. Oh. Yeah. 
we were married for 10 years. But it started to go downhill early on? Yeah. Yeah. I would say, again, I'm not, I don't want to say much because my little one, but um, it was, suffice it to say, a wonderful experience because I got this beautiful boy out of the relationship, and that was the most important part. But when I had an opportunity to come back to Los Angeles, I jumped at it. So I came back, and I, Brian and I were going to be doing this I was going to take over for his partner, move into the chair. It was going to be awesome. And then Brian at the 11th hour decided that, you know, he'd been doing 25 years of this waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning and thought maybe there's a different way. So I introduced him to a friend of mine who had started Adam Carolla's podcast. Huh. So we had a podcast for a short amount of, short amount of time. And uh, then I just started working as an actor again. It just started happening and this gig started happening and um so, so your I found myself confidence has gone up or has have yeah. you kind of struggled with it no i i, I am, as if nobody as if everybody listen, doesn't struggle with it when you're you you're probably not i don't know how old you are but i'm 50 um and i you know i think it's a maturity thing too i think it's about being away from los angeles for a long time and living a normal life with normal people and and growing up, I think and um, and also having rebuilt myself two times. So I guess if you want to count my childhood, I guess I built myself three times. Mm -hmm. So it's the confidence of knowing that I can do it. You can do this, you and that is you know that's an invaluable piece of information to have. Um, and I think that that's a lot of it too and understanding what it is as an actor in Los Angeles what you really have to do and that's why I'm now I'm a producer I just shot a pilot that I wrote um, tell me about that the pilot is called Take It From The Top and it's a great show we financed it ourselves um, my partner and I my writing partner and I so um, we are in the midst of pitching that we've shot it we're waiting it, for it to be edited I am also working with another producing partner we have two reality shows that we're pitching together she's she is a um, she's got several shows on the air already um, which one so Can that's it The Amazing Race okay um, and so, and her husband created cops, and they're they're oh, a, a cops. That's like a long-standing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, do you have any stories at all about Gavin McLeod because he played your father, Captain oh, Stubing? And I, he's I such just got a great chill. Guy. I I just talked to Gavin the other day to tell him that we were getting that Jeff and I were getting married, and it was just, he just started crying on the phone. He's just, you know, there are so many stories with Gavin. Um, he's just a wonderful, sweet, dear man who is very much like my real dad in terms of our relationship is extremely close. We are still extremely close. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Um, biggest life lesson? Oh, I think we just, I think we probably covered that. I think you know, so too. Finding your, finding your voice, finding your confidence. Okay, speed rounds. Yeah. My favorite phone app is? Uh, <coughs> my, well, not the, not the dinging. <laughs> is, that your, is that an app? That's, what is that? No, that's actually just it's my text. Okay. My favorite phone app is probably Heads Up. Uh, every morning I decide what to wear by what I have in the day and how bloated I feel. Okay. <laughs> Love it. The contents of my bag include... Oh, sweet Jesus. The contents of my bag is, you know, there's all, there's myriad things in my bag from uh, kids things, headphones to uh, never any cash. I'm famous for not having cash. Who um, has cash anymore? I don't know. I, right? I don't know. But there's always lip gloss in there. And there's always gum. I'm utterly obsessed with my fiance. <laughs> I mean, we just got engaged. You just got engaged this week. We, yeah, Tell his me, name is Jeff. Cookie. His mm -hmm. name is Jeff, Jeff Napple, K N A P P L E, and he is the love of my life. And we were introduced by my high school prom date. So yeah. we're going back to LA now. So yes. you met in LA. We did meet in LA. So this is this could be good. I know, and he's not from New York, but he lives in New York for the moment. Very good, very good, but not for long. <laughs> Whenever I'm by myself, I like to uh, sing, listen to music, or watch um, bad TV. What my favorite bad TV is? Oh gosh, right now it's probably The Housewives. Of which one? Uh, LA and New York. My weirdest health habit is? I don't really know if I have any bad health habits. My best health habit is? Working out and trying to eat clean. 
the last thing I do before I go to sleep <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, we have a witness. I know. I do and work out to marry, marry except you. for when I'm with you. <laughs> We did. We worked out this morning. If there was a movie uh, made about me, the actor, actress I'd want to play me is? Oh, um, um, what is her name? She's the it girl of, um, oh my God, I'm so bad at that. Um, uh, she was in the movie about the woman who made the hangers, Joy. Oh, wait, what made the hangers? Jennifer, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, Jennifer Lawrence, Lawrence. okay. Yeah. Nobody knows this, but? Nobody knows this, but... Uh, 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 nobody knows this, but I played with Barbies in the closet with my best friend till I was 13. I always freak out when... There's dishes in the sink. And the last time I <laughs> cried was... Today! <laughs> because... <laughs> Because my son overflowed the toilet in Jeff's apartment and, and well, do we, we really want to say that? Probably not. Engaged. <laughs> what? Well, I cried when I got engaged, that was of for course, sure. Because he surprised me and had my friend come out and sing to us with a guitar. It was beautiful. Where was this? At the James Beard house. He had the table filled with those flowers and candles and champagne and my friend came out with a guitar player and he recorded the whole thing and we haven't seen it, but it's going to be That's a moment. Yeah, you record, you have, are you going to watch it? Yeah. Yeah. Some point. Yeah, at some point. Maybe yeah, you yeah. watch it five years down the road or something. No, be. Sooner than that. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> yeah. last, uh, last question. My yeah. last question is, who is Jill Whelan? A mom um, and a woman like any other woman who's just trying to figure it all out. Jill, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Special update, since Jill and I recorded this episode, not only did Jeff become her fiance, but he became her husband. They were recently married. Okay, by now you've listened to me enough and you know that you're a big part of Really Famous. I wanna know what you want and what you think. So if you can take our quick two minute survey, that would be amazing. You can go to reallyfamouspodcast.com or just head into your show notes right now on your podcast app. In fact, anything you may want to know or see is in the show notes. So take a look, click on anything you like. Thanks for listening. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson, and this is Really Famous.